Geraldton Museum is the large modern museum with a voluntary $5 entry fee. It gives a good overview of the West Australian, particularly Geraldton, history, culture, and ecology, but with particular stress on maritime themes. I'll touch on a few interesting points that caught my attention, only a small sampling of what's in the museum. Early explorers during the 1600s did not come into contact much with the aboriginals. It's only in the 1840s that the uh, whites came into regular contact with the aboriginals. George Gray in 1839 noted seeing aboriginal houses as larger, more strongly built, and very nicely plastered over outside with clay and clouds of turf. I was struck by this list. Certainly these aboriginal characteristics did not fit with my stereotype. Aboriginals lived in villages with large, relatively well-constructed huts. Throughout Western Australia, there were fairly well-defined pathways used by the Aboriginals. They actually cultivated land, particularly native yams. They made intensive use of other resources, such as fishing. And there was a relatively large settled Aboriginal population around Geraldton. This drawing illustrates the well-constructed Aboriginal huts in the Geraldton region. Of course, the Aboriginals had some very creative implements as well, shown here the boomerang. There's a good description of the Aboriginal paths crisscrossing the countryside which surprised many early European explorers to the Midwestern region. This uh, description from Daisy Bates describes regular Aboriginal exchange fairs as regular events. Aboriginals would travel and meet to trade tools, weapons, and ornaments over vast distances. an early photograph of an Aboriginal family. Aboriginal acculturation. The arrival of the European meant an interest in mining. Although the Aboriginal people had mined Orca, by 1846 there was a search for minerals and pastoral land. In 1848, lead was discovered and mined for a short period. Today's ruins of the Geraldine Mine on the Murchison River, a very early lead mine. An early industry was harvesting and exporting sandalwood, a fragrant wood which smells lovely when burned. Another economic activity in the Geraldton area during the 1840s was racing and exporting horses to the military uh, in India. There was a large demand by the British for these horses for a period of time. It's interesting that European explorers bought many of the old Aboriginal trails. So did they really discover the country? Aboriginals were used to use as guides. By the late 1860s, there was a search for means to transport stock through the Northwest for sheep and cattle. In 1866, the sheep were run from Inca Bay in the northwest to Northampton, north of Geraldton. An Aboriginal family with a camel dray. This interesting photograph shows Jones 
uh, donkey train, leaving Mikathera for a 500 kilometer trip to Mundawindi, carrying 33 tons of building material. Because much of the uh, exploration of the Northwest was done using camels, which were well suited for the arid conditions, Afghan camel herders settled to run the teams. With the development of our mines by the 1870s and 1880s, there was a need for transport and primitive railways were constructed the first from Jericho to Northampton. The line was redundant. Early roads during the 1900s in WA were very primitive, mainly sound sand tracks that were often impassable. It was really only during the 1940s and particularly the 1950s that blacktopped roads were constructed. With the uh, development of roads came road trains. Convicts were imported from England to help with the construction of limestone buildings in Greenham, 25 kilometers south of Geraldton. it also features environmental and ecological issues. Here uh, a poster discusses the uh, very distinct line uh, between Moga and Eucalyptus based on rainfall. The uh, difference in rainfall in the arid interior leads to different types of animals. Here we have the wallaby compared with the red kangaroo. Interesting display of the wildlife, a witch tail eagle, I think, with the rabbit, and underneath uh, a large stuffed snake. There are interesting static descriptions of various wildlife. Fishing is of vital importance to the economy of Geraldton, both in the past and the present. Various fish types are identified. Here, a pink snapper, which is indeed a delicious fish. Another uh, cooler water fish is the groper. The northwest snapper is found in warmer waters. Heading north in the warmer uh, tropical waters are fish like the coral trout. The museum explains about the Luan current, a warm water current which in certain times of year brings warm waters down past Geraldton. The Luan current means the presence of tropical fish and coral which one would not expect to find in the cooler waters so far south. It's interesting that the Abrolhos Islands west of Geraldton actually has a variety of different coral reefs with some 200 varieties of coral. The Hootman and Abrolhos Highlands are the most southerly coral reefs in the Indian Ocean. They exist in what should be a cold water zone because of the warming influence of the Lewin Current. The main reef builders are the hard or stormy corals. There's a major industry in Geraldton harvesting the western rock lobster, 
Notice these lobsters don't have claws. Also known as crayfish, they're found along the west coast of Western Australia, from the Northwest Cape to Cape Lewin. They live in crevices and caves. The uh, Fisherman's Cooperative was formed in the late uh, 1950s because fishermen felt they weren't being paid enough. Apparently the Geraldton Fisherman's Cooperative is the largest rock lobster processing plant in the world. The rock lobster industry is a multi-million dollar industry. A good fishing year can generate export income of between 300 to 400 million dollars. Quite a good uh, social description of the fishermen, many of whom have built family homes on the Abraus Island for the rock lobster season. Another major fishing industry is wetline fishing. A clinker built dory with lobster pots. It's a very large uh, room in the museum uh, devoted to maritime history during the uh, 1500s, 1600s with the settlement of the Dutch in uh, Indonesia and the uh, Dutch shipwrecks along the West Australian coast. Here's a cannon from a sunken Dutch ship. Stones recovered from a ship ballast uh, bound for Batavia, or what is known as Jakarta today, for a Dutch uh, uh, settlement. Packing of the Dutch ship showing the uh, stones and cannon at the bottom and the lighter products near the top of the hull. Information on the Dutch East India Company. The uh, Dutch East India Company during the 1600s was a powerful and lucrative company carrying on trade with Asia and the East Indies. There is substantial information about the discovery of Dutch shipwrecks. Thanks for uh, exploring the Geraldton Museum with me. I hope you enjoyed the visit and maybe someday you will be able to visit in person. Have a good day and best wishes.